Well, good morning. This is Miss Tegan Ford, and we're going to continue our discussion on embryonic development by looking at how the cells interact with other cells of um, the embryo, and we call this embryonic induction, and uh, we are going to look a little bit about the history first, and then we'll look at how more modern investigations have elaborated on what they found earlier. So one of the first experiments um, was to do what's called feet mapping and fate mapping, the very, very earliest ones were using dye and they would inject the dye into a cell of the very, very early embryo, the blastocyst or blastula. And then what they would simply do is follow the dye. And they noticed in one section of the embryo, they would see uh, all of the cells of the uh, spinal cord and then this region of the uh, posterior part of the embryo would have those cells. And then if they did this cell, they would notice all of these parts in the um, abdomen region, if you will, uh, have that. Now, um, that was some of the earlier experiments, and that really kind of clued them in, wow, something's happening here. These cells are actually changing um, and going to specific regions, and they know, quote unquote, know how to do this. How do they do this? Now, in class, we watched the HHMI, let me write this down for you if you missed it or want to watch it again. We watched the HHMI lecture on stem cells and uh, you can watch it again and what they uh, told us is the stem cells in the embryo, what they uh, end up having are uh, two main things that influence the um, the embryonic conduction, we have cytoplasmic factors from within. And so these cytoplasmic factors, they're from within the cell. Now, I actually don't have a picture of this, so I, I sort of drew it. Let me go ahead and draw it again for you. In the cytoplasmic factors, you have a cell. Here's our nucleus, and the cell is making its own signals, and then these signals either act from within to turn on certain uh, proteins, or they could uh, secrete, and then they might come back and land on a signaling molecule, and then go back in. Uh, but what they started noticing are cell-to-cell -cell interactions. They started noticing these growth factors. Now, over on the left, the reason I like this picture is that it really does review a lot of things we already know. Here is cell number one, and cell number one is producing this signal molecule. Now, they call it inducer. This some, some, uh, some of them are called growth factors. Don't worry about knowing what name it is, other than you need to know that it's going to come across uh, and land on a receptor, and this receptor is then going to cause the signal transduction. So we've talked about it already. So um, that's going to cause this cell, cell number two, uh, to either turn on genes or turn on proteins or turn off genes or turn off proteins. So I like the picture on the left because it's indicating what's happening between this cell and this cell. And uh, that is kind of giving this idea of a cell-to-cell -cell interaction. Now over on the right, this is a very classic um, image of a growth factor called BMP, bone morphogenic protein. And it shows what's happening and, and the only thing that's a little um, unclear is each one of these little circles is a cell. Um, what they're uh, what is not kind of presented is you're seeing cells all throughout this. They are, they just didn't show it. Uh, but they found this area called the spamen, uh, spamen organizer. And the spamen organizer is a group of cells. And they um, produce these growth factors. Uh, and the other area of the cell is making another growth factor. So over here on the left, they're making, you can see in the blue, the bone morphogenic protein. And notice up here, they tell you that the um, ectoderm cells, if they bind to this 
bone morphogenic protein, they become the skin. But what if we want to tell some cells, hey, don't become skin, become uh, nervous tissue? Well, the spamin organizer is going to create uh, these little growth factors that inhibit uh, the cordin, noggin, there's other proteins, and they're releasing these, similar to over here on the left, they're releasing these, but what they do is they inhibit uh, that bone morphogenic protein. Now, what this does is the, this area then becomes the default central nervous system. Now, that's what we want. Uh, this is going to organize, and thus the name. And, uh, and then, so what we can see is a lot of experiments they've done where we see um, this, this, this induction happening. So this is a classic picture of a, a anterior to posterior axis. So if we were to kind of indicate, okay, here's our embryo that's starting. We've got a group of cells. Um, and uh, here's our body plan, here's our cells within it, uh, here's our front, here's our back, and uh, notice that in this picture they're declaring that these mRNA molecules, hunchback and caudal, are made all throughout the embryo, but um, if you look down here, the proteins hunchback the level in the posterior hunchback is really low. And so what they found is hunchback proteins are low in the posterior. And then the same thing could be said for caudal. Caudal is low in the front. Now, what you can imagine is a scenario that even though the um, even though caudal and hunchback mRNAs are found, um, even though they're found all throughout the mRNA, the proteins aren't. So you can almost imagine a scenario where the proteins are being inhibited and uh, or the mRNA molecules are being inhibited and then stopped. Uh, so that gives us an idea of what, what is happening. Uh, so that is the beginnings of this. Now, in the genetic transplantation experiments, uh, what they found is that the genetic transplantation experiments, they supported this link. That's what we're going to look at next.